Dark Souls is one of those games that gave players many feelings. Pain, trauma, awe-inspiring, but most of the time just pain and trauma, let's be real. Hello and welcome, I'm Philip. Today we're gonna to be looking at Dark Souls 1 enemy designs and see why they gave us these feelings. As an artist, I love art direction from games. Dark Souls 1 is one of my favorite games of all time, so I love to see these designs and see what makes them good, see what makes them bad. And in the end of the day, of course, this is gonna be completely my own opinion. So I got my stylus here with me in my hand. That means that I'm in art analyzing mode and this is where I get all my powers from. So let's do it. First up on the list is the hollow, the classic old hollow. A hollow is basically someone who lost his mind and his soul and literally just went insane and just a, is literally a hollow husk of its former self. This looks like someone you would see in some sp very specific areas in the United States reeking of some hard drugs. I love this design. It's very simple. It's not over the top. It's just very basic. It looks creepy. These hollowed out eyes with these red glowing dot eyes and, and he has some some weirdly deteriorating flesh. It looks completely weird and I love it. What I love about this design is how easily you can underestimate it. I always hated when they just suddenly kill me out of nowhere because I just feel like, dude, it's like the easiest enemy in this game and it completely fucks me up. Sometimes they can ambush you, come in numbers. And what I think is the most interesting about this common enemy that seems harmless is that they sometimes go into this blind rage mode. Like we've all seen this person one time in our life that just switches to bl blind rage mode and starts swinging around like crazy, you know? And then you have to like to like calibrate a little bit how you're gonna deal with it tactically. But sometimes it just takes you by surprise. Sometimes you can get overconfident. There's like a main occurring motto in Dark Souls. Once you start getting overconfident, this is where the game fucks you, man. I also want to take a look at these designs with the context of the world in mind. Characters never live in a vacuum, especially in Dark Souls. These characters have a lot of context and the design and the level design around it. So I'm gonna take uh, that into account as well. Moving on, we got the undead soldier. It has a sword and shield. It's just a more armored version. Most of the time they're not, they're super easy. Easy to backstab, they're easy to learn their movements. They're like the perfect beginner enemy. That's what I love about their design because they, they're like the perfect enemy to, for you to get used to as a player. They're not that special, but you know, in the beginner areas, you're gonna slowly but surely be introduced to crazier monsters, of course. There's a progression. Now these guys, the assassin, undead assassin, I do love their aesthetic. This assassin aesthetic is pretty cool. I love that, that it's just a hood and it's complete darkness with two red glowing dots. I love that. I love that about Final Fantasy IX's Vivi. I love that aesthetic. These fuckers are pretty easy to kill. One on one on one, in context of the, its level design and you don't know where you're going and you don't know where you're walking, they ambush you, they bleed you, they grab you. Dude, fuck these guys. Look at him like hiding behind this little shield like, hey, come on, and this dagger, come on. Swing at me, bro, come on. Yeah, now we have here Chupacabra. It's a Dark Souls dog enemy. I don't know how many dog enemies I've seen in Japanese games. I don't know what the deal is with that. I don't know if someone can clarify that or it's just, is it just me perhaps? I don't know. So anyway, I love this dog design because it has some kind of a bat facial features. His nose seemed to be cut off. I like the deteriorating body parts. Like everything in this game is undead. There's nothing like, aside from some NPCs, Basically everything has gone to shit. What I also love about these dogs is that you can f truly feel the unpredictableness of what creatures actually are. Creatures basically are unpredictable. When you're fighting like a humanoid kind of enemy, you kind of instinctively know what humanoid things do. They move in a similar way as you, but creatures are completely different, right? So with that comes the unpredictability of what this creature is. And I love that. In numbers, they, they can be pretty annoying. Let's not even get started when you fight them in Capra Demon's area. Man, why? Why is my question. Then we have the normal undead rat. Rats seem to be like a RPG trope as well. 
in an RPG game, you add rats. Seems like uh, the thing, the right thing to do. In some areas, they get really annoying. The part underneath the bridge where the dragon resides, you get this room where there's a lot of uh, rats that poison you. That area is, oh my God. Okay, let's, let's just go moving on to the Black Knight. I love it. The first time you see him is an impressive enemy. Like he's foreboding. First time you see him is looking at his back. He doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't even look around his surroundings. He, he so much doesn't give a fuck. He's showing his back to everything to backstab him. That's, that's how much of a badass this enemy is. So right there and then, you know, you shouldn't really mess with it because it's such an alpha male kind of enemy at that point. And when you try to kill him the first time, you're truly gonna see that, oh, this is a higher level enemy. And it shows until you progress and you see more of them. Well, I like the complete opaque blackness of its armor, the edges, the shape language, everything about it is foreboding, especially in the first time you counter it. Love it. Yes, Havel the Rock Johnson, Havel Knight. I love this character. The first time I entered the tower, open the door and I see Havel running. The first time I thought it was just an NPC until he just fucking swings this huge ass, huge ass dragon tooth. He's holding a literal giant dragon tooth that he swings with. And then I literally shit my pants. Like that was my first what the fuck moment. Like I got so scared. I you know when you get so scared, you just do this with your controller. And you start rolling around and attacking randomly because you're just panicking. Yeah. And then you die, of course. And then the second time <laughs> you encounter, uh, after your death, when you encounter Hevel Knight, you open the door again, and then you literally see this massive armored guy running up the stairs, chasing you to attack you again with his giant fucking dragon tooth. Dude, that sight <laughs> horrifies you. It horrifies me, at least. And, and then you just understand his attack patterns, and then you backstab him a few times. It's just easy. He is no big deal, actually. I, I love that moment in games. I love that moment that Dark Souls create for you uh, with this character. And that's why I love everything about this design. Not just like, oh, big chunky dude with a big weapon, but also what it represents at that moment. I love everything about it. So moving on. Ah, oh, yes, Balder Knight. The evolution of Bald Knight. He's the physical manifestation of many men's insecurities of getting bald. In all seriousness, what I like about this design is that you can visually see that it would have different movesets. And that comes from having a big defensive shield and a giant rapier. I don't know how you pronounce this weapon's name. It sounds almost French to me, like rapier. Is it rapier or rapier? Rapier. 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 You see this giant ass rapier, and then you instantly know, oh, he's gonna do the stabby, pokey uh, movesets, right? At that moment, when you encounter him, it, he feels so different from any other enemies. And I love fighting him because he has, I love that fencing uh, fighting style. This is a great beginning. The first time enemy. He's not wearing any pants. Moving on. We have the armored boar. That's not his official name, but that's what I want to call him. Because that's basically what it is. It's just a giant boar completely covered in armor, except for his butt hole. And I love what this game does is that it allows you to backstab also these kind of giant animals. And because it has its but exposed and once you backstab it you literally just you, you know what's you, you know what happens next i love this game man i love this fucking game moving on this guy i love this helmet with triple eyes i love the patterns the different patterns everything about the, the design of his outfit works really well he has a uh, trident that he used to shoot magic with he pokes you with but the best thing about his design, let's be honest, is the fact that he, when he uses his magic is that he literally goes like this. 
that's the best thing about this design, let's be honest. Moving on, we have the Titanite Demon. This is such a cool ass enemy because it's literally a moving giant statue made of some sort of uh, material, st rock, ma stone material. It's lost his head, it has like a tail and he crawls around with his arm and his leg crawls around. My favorite part about this design, aside from visually, is the sound. You can hear the foley of this creature, like someone literally dragging a huge rock around like you know, and someone recorded that and you can hear it and I love it man, the, the texture of the sound that gives so much emphasis of what this whole creature is. Man, I'm in love with it. Moving on, the butcher. When we hear the name the butcher, that's instantly enemy worthy mater material right there for any game whatsoever. We've seen it in many games. Butcher is a classic enemy that we need in all games, especially darker themed games. I love that this enemy has a burlap sack on his head and also has glowing eyes. He has a very big butcher knife as well. Like, Perfect, perfect integration of the theme and you can collect this butcher knife that I love it, man. Uh, nothing too crazy or or over the top with this guy. It's just a cool enemy to fight in the depths. Moving on, slime. Now, this is my least favorite enemy, not for the reasons you might think. Just visually, I don't like it. Aesthetically, I never liked slime enemies. I know it's a very R RPG kind of trope enemy. And you have it in almost every RPG in existence. You must, it's like an unspoken rule to have, when you're making an RPG, to have a slime in there. We're making an RPG, we have to have a slime in there. Otherwise, reviews, 1 out of 10 doesn't have slime. Worst RPG of all time. So, I don't like the aesthetic of slimes, except when it's like, it's designed in a cool way. Otherwise, I don't like how they look, why would it be there? It's boring, it's uninteresting. But I love the game design aspect of what they did with slimes in Dark Souls. It's fucking annoying. <laughs> yes. But they remind you what Dark Souls is all about. Don't get cocky, bro. Don't get overconfident. Walk around willy-nilly like you own this place. Because things are gonna fuck you in the ass eventually, right? So. These guys come from the ceiling, and until you get hit by one of those slimes, you'll never, never in your life look at ceilings in this game. You're just either looking around a little bit, scanning the area for some bullshit in the corner, but never you're gonna look what's going up there, dude. It's too much work. And when that happens, like, oh, there's a treasure over here, let me grab it, like... And then some slime falls on your head and just slowly start deteriorating your being. If your HP isn't high enough, you die. That's just the reality of it. And sometimes time passes long enough that you forget about slimes and then you get hit by these fuckers again. <laughs> so annoying, I love it. Now we have these uh, googly eye lizards, the basilisk. You either love them or hate them. If you love them, I think there's something wrong with you. I love their design. Like, in terms of design, they're so witty. These googly eyes aren't their real eyes. They have, like, very little tiny eyes in their real small head. And then these googly eyes are just for show. In this case, his huge eyes might make him bigger than he actually is. And that's... Uh, I love that kind of design. I completely hate them in-game because they curse you and curse in Dark Souls 1 compared to Dark Souls 3 is, it's brutal, bro, it's brutal. Yeah, Dark Souls 1 curse is an ain't no joke. And when you fight them in the sewers, it's even worse. So uh, let's move on. It's a walking uh, weed monster. I don't think uh, visually they're interesting. They're walking shrubs that have like tentacle-like attacks. I don't think they're that cool visually compared to all the enemies we have in Dark Souls. But they do play an interesting role when you first encounter them. They have like this ambush behavior. Ambush. When you walk around this foresty area, you don't suspect that in a bush, normal bush, 
that seems like an asset suddenly starting to grow legs and moving and starting attacking you with with his whips. Moving on, we have Tree Lizard. Now we have to look very carefully because he's camouflaged within the tree. I like this design because it has like two serpent-like necks coming out of it and it's like his proportions are really weird looking like as is with every Dark Souls enemy is like everything looks weird that's the thing about it which, which I love but you kill them very easily they don't pose much of a threat so not that great we have a skeleton good old-fashioned skeleton we have a dark RPG, we have we need to have skeletons. What I love about them is that is that they indicate that they're higher level area enemies. They regenerate, they're strong, and I love also the mechanic of like the regenerating themselves. It's, it brings a new form of challenge for the player to play around and, and strategize and see how they're going to interact in the area full of those things. Next one is Crystal Golem. I like enemies that are made up of something else. Crystals are cool looking and if you have a golem made out of crystals that's pretty cool too. They just slam their crystal arms at you and you die. That's basically it. We have Hydra. Uh, feels to me like a boss but it isn't. First time I saw this I thought no way I'm going there. This is so intimidating. I don't know what how to deal with this. It's too much. Shooting these water cannon projectiles at you slowly. I think it's really cool looking. It has some reference to real life reptilian like creatures, but it's so weird looking at the same time and I love it. Giant Stone Knight. I love this enemy because it's thematic and I love when you enter a, an area where you expect a certain theme and then you have enemies that are thematic to that area. I love it. It's like a giant stone armored night with moss growing on it. I love that idea and it's cool and you can collect that armor which is even cooler. Moving on, we have these cat monsters. They ain't no joke, they roll. They roll at you and they're, dude, they're, they're cool looking. Their ends of their mouth go way back. They have like these insane gaping jaws. I love them. And we have a tree, a possessed tree. I don't know what From Software thought, but I think they just had some leftover assets that they didn't want to waste, so they just integrated and made an enemy, I, I, I guess. I don't know. We have a frog manta ray. ray. How do you call these creatures? I think they look really cool and interesting, but they're so such a missed potential. They've done nothing with it in the game. They, they could have done so many cool things in terms of game design with this creature, like some sort of poison or whatever, but they're just uh, normal. You don't see them anywhere. Visually, I, I really like their design. Combine a creature with another creature, creates a unique creature. Boom. Next up is a big mushroom dude walking around in the forest, minding its own business. Looks pretty friendly, right? You imagine them to be really friendly. What they do is they punch you. They punch you so hard that you die. I absolutely love this enemy. Just for the fact that it's a mushroom man that fucking punches you, the player. That's 10 out of 10, dude. Next one. We're going to uh, some Blighttown territory. Oof. Just saying that word, Blighttown. Ooh. Sends me shivers down my spine. And Blighttown is not that bad once you know how to navigate around it. But these enemies, I like them because they're slow, slow, big ogres that live in these poisoned areas. They're fun to kill because they're slow. And the best part about these enemies is their loot because they literally drop shit. Steaming, heaping pile of shit that you can collect. You can use that to throw that inflicts poison or toxic or whatever. From Software is genius. I don't know, I, l I fucking love this game for this reason. And we have here, uh, I don't know what this guy's name is, Ghoul, Infested Ghoul. It's just like, hey, look at me, I'm Infested Ghoul. I don't even remember, it's been a, such a while ago, I don't even remember what he's supposed to do. But um, 
Hey, look at me! I'm infested ghoul! So uh, let's move to the next one. Now, we have here one of the best enemies of all time. One of the best RPG tropes in terms of enemies ever created, ever invented. It's a player's beloved enemy, even though it completely fucks you. And it's the Mimic. Mimics originally was created within Dungeons and Dragons. One of the co-creators, I believe, coined the Mimic that we all know and love. And that just goes to show you at how far DMs will go being utter assholes to their players. We have the greatest enemy of all time and Dark Souls' interpretation of that, which I think is even cooler because you open the wrong chest and then this chest literally grows legs and a body and its arms comes out of its mouth. He has this phantasmic laughter that is completely disturbing. His individual teeth have these insectoid kind of quality to them. He moves around with its arms like in a, the most unnatural way possible. And he's very tall, which makes him even more disturbing than it should be. And then he proceeds by attacking you with kicks he, he proceeds by kicking you once he gets you he, he fucking devours you entirely but this is one of my favorite enemy designs there are more enemies that didn't fit in this video so we have to continue on the next one for now i just want to thank you so much for watching i really fucking appreciate it i'm gonna be seeing the next one see you in part two see ya